my friend, my brother, my just, you know, great person to have in my life. It is an honor and privilege to finally get a chance to see you and talk with you, man. Um, from the first day that we, we spoke to today, you have been doing some amazing things, man. I'm so glad that we got a chance to, to get together and talk because you've been extremely busy. I've been extremely busy. First question, man, is how are you doing, especially with, you know, COVID-19 and all the craziness, man? Because something like this would have been doing in person, then we would probably grab the bite or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or we would have been uh, on hockey skates again, and, and <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, reminds me of the first time we met. And, and you know, before we get into anything else, Rudy, um, you know, I can't thank you enough, man. I mean, I mean, you've been such a big, such a big support to so many new artists, actors, creatives, entrepreneurs, um, you know, you've just always been there supporting us, giving us a platform. And, and, you know, for the last 10 years, no matter what I've done, um, you know, you've just, you've just been there, right. It's like, you got to talk to Rudy. And, and, and so thank you for that, man. Uh, very, uh, very honored to hear you say that, my friend. But, thank you so uh, much. The last, yeah, how are you doing with all this? Yeah, I mean, look, the last year has been complicated, complex, um, you know, for all of us. I mean, it's, it's, it's a crazy time in the world when everybody, no matter where you at, no matter where you are at in life, no matter where you live in the world, um, where you come from, what your background is, what your economic status is, whatever it is, it was, we were all experiencing the same thing at the same time as human beings. And, and I think that was incredible. Um, for me, it was a time of great learning, uh, a time of great reflection. I think, um, you know, especially in the world of entertainment and media, uh, I know for me, I've grown so much over this last year because it's really given me a moment to just pause and just really value. And I know this sounds cliche, but it just, and I mean this from my heart, it just gave me a moment to pause and just reflect and not realize that, you know, you got to keep going and the, you know, competitiveness of it all. It just, it just really grounded me. And, and, and as, and, and again, I know this sounds cliche, but it just really made me grateful for certain relationships, certain things, and, and really just changed, you know, um, what I value, um, you know, in my life. So. Does that have anything to do those values um, becoming an uncle? Uh, <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Because I mean, having a newborn in the family, especially this time yeah. is very, very special. Yeah. I mean, you know, my, my uh, sister uh, just gave birth to the most beautiful baby boy, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during all this time, it, it, it's, it's definitely uh, a beautiful feeling. Um you know, I feel like I had a kid, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's definitely giving me a uh, baby fever, <laughs> <laughs> but I get to do all the fun uncle stuff, which is great. So. Uh, and, and Okay. When you say some of the fun stuff, we are talking about entertainment. We're talking about sports. We're talking about so many things that you have put yourself in. It's an amazing thing. You know, it's funny because um, you know, one of the people that I look up to, believe it or not, is uh, Sylvester Stallone. And one of the reasons why is, isn't because of the action movies and whatever. It's because of how he took control of his career. You know, people who if they don't know the whole story about Rocky and how he wrote it and how he yeah. made sure that he was going to be the star of this. He wasn't going to just give away his script. And, you know, it became a uh, movie of the uh, movie of the year, the Academy Awards, best movie. You remind me of that old school appeal is the fact that from day one, you've taken control of your career and not let entertainment dictate who you should be Thank and you. where you should be and what lane you should be driving. Where does that drive come from? Huge. Uh, that's a huge compl <laughs> compliment. One that I don't know if I'm worthy of, but you are, man. But, but one thing I can definitely say is, um, very early on in my life, I realized that, and I'm going to be frank with you, and I, and I love talking to you, is nobody's going to do anything for you in your life. Nobody. I mean, obviously, except for your family, of course. But, you know, 
you can't depend on other people to make you. Do you know what I mean? I know. And, um, and you know, I mean, you know that, I mean, you've built your own thing tremendously. So, you know, that sort of be my mindset when I came into this crazy world of film, television, media, which is very cutthroat, which is very competitive. Um, so I realized that, and maybe I had the benefit of my father being a producer. So I kind of grew up on movie sets in the world. So I kind of understood the world and how to navigate it a bit. Um, but I realized that I got to build my own opportunity. Uh, so that was the first thing. And I think that spirit comes from my father who, you know, came here from India uh, at 18 with uh, like five bucks in his pocket, you know, started to wash windows and work in factories and do odd jobs. And then, you know, God has been kind and, 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 and he's achieved a lot of success. But obviously I've seen him build his own opportunities along the way and, and not depending on anybody. Um, so that was my mindset. You know, when, when I wrote Breakaway, when I decided to produce Breakaway and also star in it, um, it was a lot of hard work. It was, it was years and years of trying to get the project off the ground. And I was fortunate once some big names came on board, Rob Lowe, Russell Peters, Drake, et cetera, the momentum picked up. But, you know, there was years of planning and work that went into that. There was years of heartbreak where it was one day the project's going, one day it's not going. But I was always committed to the fact that, you know, I was tired of, and at that time, 10 years ago, you know, the only roles that South Asians were ever up for were, you know, the terrorist or the cab driver or the convenience store worker. It was nobody could have thought that you know a group of south asian boys could be a lead in a big film you know um so so i was just committed to that and just committed to the fact that how do i want to see myself and how do i make people believe in this vision which was breakaway and and i've been very very fortunate where you know 10 years later the film you know, kind of has reached this iconic Canadian film status. I mean, obviously from a commercial and business standpoint, the film has done incredibly well, yeah. but it's amazing that 10 years later, there's still over 300 schools a year that screen the film. The government chooses it to welcome new Canadians. Um, you know, I'll be still walking down the street, be like, yeah, Punjabi hockey movie guy, you know, or whatever. And <laughs> people are still wearing the Speedy Singh jerseys and the hats and the roots jackets and whatever. I mean, we created kind of a movement. Um, but it was a bunch of people coming together that really believed in that. But, but yeah, that was a special time. And, um, and, 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 and again, I talked to a lot of kids and, and for me, I think it's going to be kind of, you know, when you think of your legacy, I think breakaway is going to be a huge part of that. And for me, it's, it's, I'm just very humbled by the fact that, you know, future generations of black kids, brown kids, whatever it is, see that film and are like, cool. Somebody that looks like us can be in a film and can star in a film. Let's talk about Breakaway because of course, an amazing uh, film that's on Netflix now. We can see it on Netflix. It is, it is on Netflix now, which is, which is amazing that it's gonna, I, I'm finding that A, it's, it's opening up to a whole new Netflix audience. Uh, and B, what, what I'm really surprised at is the film still holds today. Um, even though it's about nine years old now, the film still feels contemporary and modern and cool, which is, which is interesting. I think one of the big reasons why is because it, it goes to your work and your storytelling. You don't just tell, tell stories about culture. You tell stories that are Canadian stories. And literally when I watch your films is like when I look out the window or if I walk down the yeah. street, these yeah. are the people that I see every day and you put them in the film. Now, when we look at Breakaway, it's so interesting because to me, Breakaway, and you probably, I, like, it's, it's brilliant. It's a hockey reference, but Breakaway is more than just a yeah. hockey reference. It's yeah. something else that has to do with culture and family, culture, too. Yep. Culture, family. Yeah, I, I remember Breakaway, it, was, it took us the longest time to zero in on that title. We went through so many different titles and, um, and, then, and then it was just the most simplest thing. And, and it sort of came in when we were scripting the last moment when um, you know, the character scores on a breakaway goal. And, and I just kept reading breakaway, breakaway, breakaway on the page. And, 
And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you hit it right on the head. It was, it was all those elements coming together of this character, you know, breaking away from tradition, breaking away from his family. But again, you know, bringing a bit of himself and his culture to the sport that he loves, you know? And, th and that was really the idea um, is, you know, hockey, you know, hockey is for everyone. It's, it's amazing that that conversation and that whole marketing around hockey's for everyone is, is happening now in like 2020, 2021. And I always joke with my friends that are hockey players and, 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 all, and all these guys where I'm like, I was the original Hockey Diversity Alliance. <laughs> like if you look at the HDA just got formed now in 2020, me and all my Punjabi brothers, we were repping that back in, back in 2011. So um, no, it, it's, it, listen, I mean, it, it's, it's just so, so humbling the fact that the film just gets the love that it does. You know, and, and I have to add in too, brilliant russell peters as a villain yeah. i mean russell I peters, give too much too much away yeah, on this also also like never before i mean he's i, I he's he's funny in it he's yeah. you know yeah you're, you're right he has those gray shades in it he has this one scene where i still remember he's he's getting married and his fiance is having doubts and how he goes to convince her and you watch that scene and you're like there's such a great actor in russell yeah um and those in those three months that I spent with him, with, with th those those three months that I spent with him, were so amazing. I mean, I learned so much. It was like going to you know a uh, you know improv class because obviously Russell's stand up, it, you know uh, Russell's background of being a stand up, he always just keeps you on your toes. And and for me as a new actor, going into this set with you know 150 people, having the nerves, a he was very calming. I mean, very supportive, but B, he would always change the lines, um, which was fun because it, it just keeps it fresh, you know, and you, and you can't get too locked into any type of script. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for those, you know, three months that I was able to spend with him. Dr. Cabby, Little Italy, two amazing films. When you look at the body of work that you're doing, the people that you're getting in these films, international stars, stars that are known through television, uh, through other big films. How yeah. does it feel getting these people? These people are coming and saying, yeah, I want to be part of the story that you're telling. I mean, Little Italy is the perfect Toronto or any city story. Um, Dr. Cabby, there's a Dr. Cabby in everybody out yeah. there who's trying to find themselves. Well, how does yeah. it feel having these big stars in there? And again, telling these great human stories. Um, you know, that's just the type of cinema that I want to do. I, I, some of my fondest memories of a kid is going to movies with my entire family. Uh, my parents, my siblings, my cousins, even my grandma at times. And, and just sitting around um, a crowded theater with families and people just having an experience where we're all united by a story with heart, laughter, endearing characters, and some sort of a message, you know, and, 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 and that always was the type of cinema that I wanted to do. Those were the type of stories that I wanted to do where, where for 90 minutes, you can make people laugh, you can make people cry, and hopefully the real success is, is they can leave having learned something and they just see the world or the people around them a little differently. And that's really important to me. And, you know, Rudy, um, you know, you talk about Dr. Cabby, you talk about Little Italy. It's funny because you're very kind. I wish the critics were as kind to me, uh, you know, when those films are coming out. But again, it doesn't really matter what they think because at the end of the day, A, the business speaks of those films from a commercial standpoint. I'm, I'm really, proud to say that those films made money for their investors. That's something that I take extremely seriously is that whether it's the studios, whether it's the private investors, whether it's the international distributors, um, you know, if they've bet on me, that bet has to pay off and that investment has to pay off. And that's how you get more trust in the whole market, right? So A, I'm very proud that those Canadian films did well from an economic standpoint. But more, I feel like those films kept pushing the boundary in terms of diversity, right? And if you look at a Dr. Cabby, if you look at a Little Italy, if you look at a Breakaway, 
there is so much diversity in front and behind the camera. There are so many uh, young people that got breaks because of those movies uh, that were able to, you know, uh, just find roles. Um, so for me, that's really what's special about it. And, and I think, uh, yeah, the films are commercial and maybe they're a bit broad or, you know, I've been, uh, uh, you know, told, hey, your films are cheesy or, you know, critics right there, whatever. But you know what? The audience for which my films are intended for, they work for that audience. They really, really do. I mean, I just wish some of the critics would go to a, a packed theater on a Saturday night in Branton, in Mississauga, in Surrey, BC, and see uh, what a uniting experience it is to see you know, brown people, black people, Asian people, white people, all sitting and watching Dr. Cavi and saying, you know, uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this, this is a story about um, immigration. This is a story about heart. This is a story about this country. And this is a story about anybody in their life that has ever felt, you know, overqualified and underutilized. You know, it has that, it has that universal emotion that sort of unites us all. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, that's sort of always, uh, for me, the thought that goes in is, you know, how do I, how do I tell a story that a people are going to believe in, but you know, everybody's going to have fun, uh, the people making it and you know, the people watching it. I guarantee you, if those films came out in the last 15 months, critics would be looking at it very different. Remember yeah. we're, we're in the woke era, but right. Um, I'm really curious though. A, is there going to be a breakaway too? B, I've asked you this before. Is Dr. Cabby going to be a television series? Oh, because nice. it's just waiting to happen with that. And I Little know. Italy 3, is there going to be a chance for a second part to Little Italy? Or is it going to be, or could there be Little Greek Town or Little, little India or Little something? Because these stories can still continue to be told. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and there's so much love for, for, for all of those films. Um, okay, so Breakaway, we have been trying so hard to find the right script and the right kind of idea to follow it up. Uh, actually, right now feels like the best time more than ever, uh, especially with the whole like Mighty Ducks reboot and everything like that. Yeah. I've been pitched so many ideas. Uh, so we'll see um, if that if that if that can happen or not. Uh, Dr. Cabby, we have we've been working really hard on a full TV series, Bible script, everything like that. It's a whole package ready to go. Again, I I think one thing about movies and I think one thing about TV shows is it's really about timing. Um, you know, projects come with their own destiny, and when the stars are meant to align, they do. And, and that's really one thing that I've learned is you can work really, really hard, but when it's your time and when it's that project's time, that's its time. Um, so we'll see. Um, hopefully that time will come. And, uh, you know, little Italy, we'll see. I mean, uh, never really thought about it, but, uh, but I, think, I think the characters were all just so wonderful in it that uh you know people people a lot of people have told me that they definitely want to see more i definitely want to do that you know we follow each other on social media um and one of the things of course i've had the chance to see and this is where the jealousy comes in i'll say it right off i'm watching and i'm seeing wait a minute what's my brother doing um courtside at the raptors games wait a minute playoffs He's sitting right in, and look who he's sitting next to. He's got this celebrity, that celebrity. Man, you, sports, and basketball all go together. Where did this love come from for this, and especially supporting our Toronto Raptors, which is one of the reasons why I have this yeah. on, because you were part of that whole series in a lot of ways too, man. It's just, um, you know, the Raptors are such an incredible story and organization because I feel for – us as kind of kids of color, it it, 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 it it was really a movement that started to bring us together. You know, it was, it, it was this team that, that kind of united us all, you know? And, and as much as I love hockey, you know, I also do understand that hockey is problematic in a lot of ways. 
um, which we'll get to on some projects that I'm working on, on how to truly make hockey is for everybody. But, but you know, the Raptors are almost like a team of immigrants, right? It is, it is uh, an incredible immigrant success story, right? Of a team of a group of guys that have, you know, come to this country over the last 25 years fighting culture, climate, uh, <laughs> literally, and, you know, being looked at as the outsiders, mm -hmm. right? And, and nobody ever thought this team or this sport would even survive in this country. So I think just what the Raptors stand for and how they've moved and carried themselves as an organization, I think it just gave us that connect of A, how accessible it was, um, and B, just how they marketed to us organically and um, engaged with us. I shouldn't even say marketed, but you know, the Raptors as an organization really engaged with immigrant communities. And, and that's why I think that connect is so strong. Okay, there's some other things I want to ask you about uh, sports because you've been able to do something that's really, really cool. It's almost like another stage into yeah, your life and your career. But, be sure. but yeah, but before we get to yeah. that, I need to ask you this. Were you there when the basket went in? And you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I know where you're getting at too. And, um, you know, we definitely have some show and tell planned here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was. I was very, very fortunate and blessed to be uh, sitting in our seats when the shot happened. It was truly one of the most incredible moments of my life. Um, I think I think for a lot of us in the city. Yeah, it was it, it was almost as if time stopped. You know, when 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 Kawhi let that go and it was, you know, I think it was one, two, three, four, five, right? It, it's 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 honestly as if just time just stopped. And and um, you know, I'm still thinking back to that moment and and just what it what it made us all feel um it's I, you really have no words for that we all have a continuous feeling but yours is just a little bit more special can yeah. we do the show and tell now please <laughs> <laughs> so how do i set this up uh this was a gift from Kawhi, who i was very fortunate to build um, a friendship with with him and his family um, while they were here. And, um, you know, Kawhi, obviously a man of few words, uh, but when he does speak, it's uh, very special. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 I, and I think, you know, some people may not use their words, but they're just great with their actions and, 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 and they really let their actions speak for themselves. So while he was here, we were able to build, uh, like I said, a really nice friendship. And, uh, before he left, um, he uh, gave us a little gift, which uh, which I'll which I'll show you, Rudy, because I know you've wanted to see these. Uh, so this is so this so yeah, these are the shot shoes. So it says the shot right there. That's what he was wearing. These be these uh, blue New Balances, Game Seven, right there, and he signed off on it right there. How did you feel when he gave you this? I mean, uh, I, I was, I was, I was lost for words. Honestly, it's, it's like for him to part with these and it just, it just uh, blew me away. Really have people offered money for you? They must have offered money for you for this. Cause I, I don't I, even know how much that would be. Believe it or not, nobody's ever offered me anything for these because I think they just know that a <laughs> I'm not going to sell and b like how do you even put a price to these? Like where do you even where do you even start pricing these? Okay, well let, let's put it this way: we are not going to mention where you live. <laughs> so thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Kawhi. I mean, this is uh, this is this is just beautiful. This is that's just like a lifetime of memories here. And uh, again, I can't I can't wait to just you know. Uh, have this forever and just sort of pass it down. I can't. I mean, yeah, I was gonna say I. I cannot wait until your nephew gets old enough to appreciate. Right. That. I mean, this is really a part of not only Toronto, but.
but you know, Canada, but just in general, like, you know, basketball sporting history right here. That's so, amazing. Really, really special. So yeah, I just wanted to show that to you because I know you'd be wanting to see it. Damn right I have. You know, again, we're talking about special. You've taken sports and basketball and you've meshed it into something else where you basically are sitting where I am sitting as a host. What has been that next step that you've taken? Because what you've done is really amazing. Yeah, well, you know, life's all about uh, identifying opportunities, being at the right place at the right time, um, having an open mind, having an open heart, and just diversifying, just, you know, diversifying yourself, you know, not getting too comfortable in any position. And, you know, that sort of happened to me in my life where two years ago, uninterrupted, which is, you know, LeBron's baby, uh, it's his content studio, it's his athlete empowerment brand that he started in 2015 the opportunity came to bring it to Canada. And, uh, you know, we were having these conversations and, and uh, with Maverick and LeBron and his team and, you know, my partner, Scott, and, you know, Drake's camp as well. And we were just all talking about what sports was starting to mean really to Canadian audiences, Canadian fans, um, you know, how, athletes in this country are so diverse and doing so many special things and just how um, the interest for sports and athletes was just growing tremendously. And we all sort of recognized that opportunity and we, and we thought this is a great time to bring Uninterrupted to Canada, uh, a brand that truly believes in empowerment of athletes, but also empowerment of people um, empowerment of creatives that can help us tell stories that are more than just athlete stories. Um, you know, the things that athletes are doing for their families, their communities, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so that's sort of how it all came together. I mean, it, it just took a series of meetings and, uh, you know, uh, I was very, blessed that LeBron Maverick who are like mentors to me and uh, really believe that uh, you know I could sort of head the brand here and be a big part of bringing it to Canada and it was a lot of trust and um, and again you know using my experience of storytelling and and just sort of the you know relationships that I've built over the years um, how do we really make this a special platform um, here in Canada, one that is different, one that is unique, um, one that's real, one that's not just traditional sports media, but one that's really about, you know, stories and change. And, and that's what the last kind of year and a half, two years of my life have been is building this brand, which uh, has done some very, very special things. How, who are some of the people you've had a chance to speak with and how does it feel being on the other side? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, so part of the Uninterrupted brand is we do a show called Needing Dough Canada. And Needing Dough Canada is a show in which we talk about financial literacy. We talk about financial empowerment. For some reason, a lot, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of young people are scared or uh, just cautious to ask questions about money. For some reason, money is such a taboo topic, right? And I think it's just people are worried about asking the wrong question. And, and really there is no wrong question. And I think more than ever right now, after what we've all been through, understanding your finances and, 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 and sort of realizing that, you know, what financial responsibility, what financial wellness really is, is so important and so top of mind. And that's why we use athletes to help tell us those, to help tell us those stories. Because athletes have such a unique relationship with money, right? Because most athletes, um, you know, obviously don't come from a lot, but they're sort of front loaded, right? Where the general population makes more money as they go along and sort of get more experience. Athletes make so much money at such a young age where they don't really have a lot of experience with money and they don't know how to navigate it. So what are the life lessons that they've learned 
that they can kind of teach everybody else, right? Um, and it, and it, and it's and it's been amazing just to like, and and I just get so much great feedback where you know I've interviewed um, Serge Ibaka, you know, and he said two things in the interview that went viral and everybody really appreciated. Where he said, first of all, any car is a car, <laughs> you know, he's not a flashy guy, he's not dropping all this money on you know crazy cars. He's like, listen, I'm good with any car, you know. I didn't even buy my first car till my fourth year in the NBA. Um, you know, and then he talked about how his daughter wanted an iPhone 12 and he's like, no, I just got you an 11. That's fine. You know? And I was talking to a friend of mine and he's like, man, I don't even make close to what Sergio Baca made. And I'm always buying my kids, these new iPhones, blah, 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 and just different lessons. And, you know, we were talking to Kyle Lowry and, you know, Kyle Lowry said something great where, you know, he said, he's really afraid to go broke and, 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 and just different lessons that he's learned and, how he's bringing up his boys. So these are just incredible conversations that I've been very fortunate to have. Where again, do we see this? What platform do we see this? How do we get a chance? To be so uh, it's on uninterrupted YouTube channel, but also we've created uh, this incredible website called meetingdo.ca, which hosts all the episodes, some incredible, simple um, articles about, you know, just simple, basic financial stuff that I think young people can just learn from. Um, you know, it's, we live in this time right now, Rudy, and it's kind of scary to me where I feel like so many young people, especially with social media, live beyond their means. And, and it's become so competitive where um, you feel validated by the things that you post, be it your cars, be it your jewelry, be it your clothing, this, that. And uh, I just, I just really worry about that. I really, really do because, to me, um, you know, and I know it's just a natural part of growing up. That stuff's not cool. I mean, you reach a point where you're like, that's not cool. You know, saving is cool. Um, investing is cool. Investing back in your community is cool. Um, trying to help people along the way, um, you know, that to me is the stuff that, and, and look, I think it's, I think it's naturally just learn as you get older and your priorities change. But one thing I always say to a lot of young people is, is the sooner you can realize the difference between what you want and what you need, um, you know, life just becomes so much simpler. I'm just going to add to that because there are some videos on uh, TikTok and other platforms where you see a, a young, young brother goes up to other people and he's asking them, how much are you wearing? And the person will say, well, I've got a $50,000 chain. I got $300 worth of shoes. I've got, you know, an ostrich, uh, you know, belt. And I'm going to myself, who's spending all this money to go shopping and you're wearing all of this and you're telling people this. And then he checks to see if whatever the jewelry is has real diamonds. And he's got this little machine. And it's supposed yeah. to say, yeah, it does. And I'm thinking to myself, are you kidding me? Like, and I and, and what you're saying is exactly correct because when you see this kind of stuff and people thinking this is the way you're supposed to live, no, nah, flash don't last too long. But what you just talked about absolutely, absolutely does. As we're as we're wrapping this interview up. Yeah, those are those are the things that people are gonna remember you for. You know, how much you invested in yourself, in your others, and the people around you. And that's yeah. what you do. That's exactly what you I'm do. Trying. No, uh, you don't have to try. You, you do it. So what advice can you give folks out there? Because especially since we're still dealing, as we speak, yeah. Ontario is dealing with a lockdown. Other people are dealing with so many different situations. People have lost jobs. They've lost family. Yeah. They've lost okay. hope. What advice can you give that people can get through this dark, tough time and hopefully be able to see that light ahead of them because the light is ahead. Yeah, no, it definitely is. I think, um, you know, brighter days are ahead. For sure they are. I mean, you know, things, things are going to be back to normal. What that new normal is going to be, we're all going to have to adapt to. I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn because I know a lot of people are experiencing so many different things. So I don't want to just throw out a general um, advice. Um, like that, I don't feel like it's my place to do that because everybody's dealing with this so differently. And I really want to be mindful of that. But 
you know, again, I just want to say what I've learned and, and maybe what I can talk to people around my age or, you know, people younger than me and, and just, and just what I feel is, you know, I've really taken this last year, like I said, to really work on myself. Um, you know, early on in this pandemic, in a lot of different ways, I said, I'm never going to get this time again, just to, uh, just to reevaluate my life, um, learn some new skills, educate myself, read, try to get healthy, um, spend time with my family, really invest in certain relationships that I may have dropped along the way for whatever reason, you know, um, you know, just maybe life gets busy or whatever it is. But I feel like, um, you know, I just kept having this vision is how do I want to come out of this? Um, and just forcing myself to think even from a business standpoint as to like, where is the world going to go? What are some of the short-term, long-term challenges going to be? And sort of what is that next thing? And how can I, how can I adapt my thinking um, so that when the world is normal, uh, I sort of am ready to keep pace with that. So, you know, that's all I can say is, is, you know, just keep learning, just keep growing. Um, you know, my dad, when I was younger, always said to me that, you know, when you go to sleep at night, always think about like, did you learn something new that day? And it could be like the smallest thing. And, and that's what I always try to do is, uh, you know, whether it's a podcast I'm listening to or, you know, um, a book I'm reading, or even if it's a little YouTube video I'm watching, just about something just you know, can be about anything. Um, have I, have I learned something that's just going to help my mind and me just grow a little bit? So yeah, I would say long-winded answer, but invest in yourself and really take that time um, in yourself. Social media, where do we go to follow you? Uh, I am on Instagram, Vinay Vermani, and Twitter, Vinay Vermani24. And uh, also follow Uninterrupted Canada. Uh, it's great content, um, authentic content. Um, so yeah, please, please support Uninterrupted Canada. It's a really, really special platform. Then always a pleasure talking to you, man. We definitely have to get together. We will. In person. I but man, wait. I said, I'm so happy and so proud of everything that you're doing. Thank you for representing Canadian entertainment the way you do through your vision, because it truly is what Canada is all about. Thank you so much. You, for this. And, and, and again, like I said at the beginning of this interview, thank you for always being there. Really, um, you know, uh, from the first day we met, you know, I was a nervous kid coming into a junket and, and you were one of the first interviews that I did. And, and you just make everybody feel so confident and uh, that's your warmth, that's your energy. And so thank you. And, uh, you know, I wish you all the best for the show. Thank you again, my friend. Thanks, man.